Hey everyone, welcome back to the Daydreamer Worlds podcast. I'm so glad you're here, and it feels like the perfect sunny, warm, abundant day to bring you this episode. It's the last Friday in May, and the sun is shining on my desk as I record this. And I've just listened back to this, and just felt really warm and fuzzy inside. I spoke to Dorothy of Moon Tent、um, about all things moon magic, about adorning ourselves with flowers, about having cyclical relationships to our bodies, about building community beyond social media, and about running a product-based business. I really think you will like this conversation, and I hope it arrives in your life as some comfort and some joy and something to lean into for the weekend. Just a few announcements from me, as always. I'm currently packing up my tiny house in Brighton, so that's pretty big news. I've been here for two years, which is the longest I've ever lived anywhere as an adult, and I really love this house. It's tiny, 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 but it has taught me so much about being intentional with my stuff, about really inhabiting a space, and becoming intimate with a bioregion. I feel so close to. The hawthorn trees here, the lilac tree at the lilac bush outside my window, with the cleavers in my garden, and I'm leaving kind of really excited, but also a bit sentimental with a heavy heart. So I'm heading to Germany first, and then I'm spending the rest of the summer in Scotland, and then in autumn I'm gonna decide what's gonna be next for me. And yeah, that's pretty exciting. I don't know. I have a feeling that when I have a little bit more space, that lots of other things will grow in my business. There's just a few things that I would like to emotionally and physically take space up around that I haven't been able to really embody yet. So, for example, I would like to make more textile art and share that. I would like to record more videos for my DIY small business school and have good lighting for that. So. Yeah, like follow along on Instagram if you're interested. I'm definitely gonna overshare about my travels and about my decision making process. This Sunday,、um, the next self and community care circle is coming up. That's a casual drop in that anyone can join.、Um, it's part of the Magic of Embodiment program, which is for patrons, and that should be really fun. We'll do a short meditation. I'll draw some cards. We'll talk about the theme for the month in the program a little bit. Which is faith,、um, which I'm pretty excited about, and we're just going to connect and share what's up. So if you want to join that, you can become a patron through the link in my profile、um, and in the show notes. And if you have any questions, let me know.、Um, like I said, there's a new module coming out for the Magic of Embodiment on Monday, which is all about faith. And this program is an ongoing membership where we're looking at tarot. And ritual and self-care and folk herbalism through the lens of embodiment. I also have a few cool business things coming up in the summer. In mid June, in mid June、um, till July, I'm running a new life、um, business workshop series all about DIY media as an alternative to constantly being in the social media hustle. So I'm going to be teaching about podcasting, making zines. Um, finding routines about creative collaborations and blogging, and just generally about building an audience in a way that feels good to you. So that is a four-part workshop series that's live and interactive. You get to ask questions. I'm going to share all my tips and tricks and tools, and you can take part in that also by becoming a patron and pledging three dollars or more. So it's a very affordable way of working with me and learning more about business stuff if that's your jam. Thank you so much for listening. If you like it, please leave a review. That would be so appreciated. And now I'm going to let you listen to the interview, and I hope、um, you will support Tarate as well. She is also、um, hosting her own podcast of, in which I've been a guest recently, and she has a Patreon. She has a ton of beautiful things to offer. So yeah, have a beautiful Friday. Hey everyone! Welcome back to the Daydream Rose podcast. I'm super happy to bring you another episode with a really special guest. So this one is not a solo one. I have someone here who's looking at me right now with a really beautiful face, and I'm like, yes! I'm so excited to see what's coming.
up. So this is Doa Te, who's running the Moon Tan podcast. And um, you might have seen that I've been interviewed on her podcast recently, and we talked about the power of renaming. And it was a really beautiful conversation that kind of, I think, came to be because I said on Instagram, hey, does anyone want to interview me? And I kind of just really wanted to learn to ask for what I want because I was like oh gosh I've been podcasting for three years and I would really like to be on the other side for a change and that's how we got to know each other um, and then I kind of explored her work some more I listened to her podcast um, which interestingly and you know I so believe in synchronicities anyway but I had also started listening to the podcast a few weeks before I shout out on Instagram and then being invited on it and so it just all makes sense to me now. <laughs> and I'm so glad that we can close the circle today and talk a little bit more about plans and self-care and moon magic and all these beautiful things. So thank you so much for being here with me. I'm really excited to speak to you. And I would love to start by just hearing who you are and where you are in the world right now. And maybe also tell us what nature is like around you because we're recording this on Beltane, which we were just saying is so cool and special when I saw you you booking into my calendar today I was like yes that is exactly the conversation I want to have that day <laughs> thank you so much Yaro and it's a true honor to be on your podcast and I totally agree the synchronicities are just building and it is an absolutely beautiful day to be talking with you um, my name is Dorte Sophie Royal and I am the host of Moonwise podcast and running Moon Tent Co and I am doing this all out of Portland, Oregon, where I am right now, and it's just the perfect May day right now. I'm looking out my window, and there is a huge Indian dogwood tree blooming with the most beautiful pink flowers, and every morning I wake up and look at it, and I'm just so overjoyed, and I just discovered a lilac bush in, this, in the side yard of my house, and so I'm smelling that every day. My kale plants have gone to flower because I just like it when things go to flower, though many people and gardeners would be like, oh, you have a messy garden, but I'm like, let them flower. <laughs> so I have a little um, kale, a yellow kale flower in my hair right now, and it's making me happy. And I was just telling you that any excuse for flowers or putting flowers on my body in some way is <laughs> something that I that I really love to do. So nature is popping here there's just everything is blooming so it's a really joyous time yeah and I I was as you were saying that I was like oh gosh that that flower is making me happy too <laughs> because I get to see it right now yeah thank you so much for sharing and thank you also for running this beautiful podcast yourself I've really gotten so much out of this conversation and also the forecasts if I'm totally honest, I'm not always a big fan of forecasts, but I really resonated with the one um, that you're offering. Um, sorry, can you remind me what your guest for the forecast, who, who this is? Yeah, her name is Susan Lipschitz. Yes, 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 yes. That makes been my sense. Yeah. For, for a lot, for many oh. years, more than 10 years. So it's actually been oh, a really wow. sweet thing to get to check in with her every month and kind of amplify her message to the world. So it's been a sweet mm -hmm. partnership. Yeah. 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 I, that really shines through in the conversations that you're having. And yeah, it's just beautiful to listen to that. So thank you so much. Um, we kind of dove right into the beautiful things that you're offering, but can you tell us a little bit more? So you have the podcast. I know you're also offering physical products, which is really magical. And I always have such admiration for people who do that because as someone who runs two businesses, I mean, Whew, you know the logistics and the things it's just it's just a lot isn't it and I think I would love to offer something tangible physical one day but so far it just hasn't logistically played out I live in a tiny house right now I can't really commit to shipping and that kind of thing so I would love to hear a little bit more about what you're offering and how that came to be yeah, absolutely. I started Moon Tent. Um, it was kind of like a channeled thing. I had been studying herbalism and I was kind of sitting and daydreaming by a redwood tree um, in my backyard where I lived at the time. And I suddenly just like the name and the logo and the idea like just 
flew into my head. And so I knew that it wasn't necessarily my idea, but that it was something I could, I could run with. And so I did. And at the time I was really interested in women and helping myself and those I cared about reconnecting with the moon cycles and also really developing a cyclical relationship with our own bodies. And so because I was studying herbalism, I just thought, oh my gosh, there are so many beautiful teas that I could blend for each phase of our monthly cycle. And a lot of people don't know that we have four phases like the moon and that we are ever changing beings. Um, and so I created the blends and um, I am a mom, so I don't have a ton of time, but in the time that I do have while my son's in school or napping or sleeping, I do all my things <laughs> like blending and um, also a lot of just like sharing about plants and the cycles, but it's really kind of blossomed from there and I've realized only recently that I, I didn't even realize, I remembered that I'm a seed keeper. So that means um, both physical seeds, but also seeds as ideas, as people, as songs and things like that. And so I'm really starting to realize that moon tent, which has been kind of like this, this literal tent, like an umbrella under which a lot of sacred feminine things can happen. I'm seeing it develop into almost like a, a womb space where the seeds can be nourished. And so that means um, little interviews about sacred feminine wisdom or song seeds for women's songs or um, literal products to support the womb and the cyclical way of being. So I think it's in my nature to kind of do a lot of things at once, <laughs> which is <laughs> interesting. Um, but I do love making the products. And the thing that I love most about it is it really ties me to the moon phases. So on the new moon, I'm making the tinctures and on the full moon, I'm harvesting them. And so I'm actually physically needing to do something to kind of like tap into that cycle. So it's still growing, it's still evolving, but it's a beautiful practice. Yeah, it is. I can so imagine you doing that. And have you always been a plant person or, you know, did you kind of come out of the room being like, yes, plants or did, how did you first come across this work and felt like, yes, this is it. That's my path. It's interesting because I definitely came into the world as a plant person and I have a lot of memories as a child being very fascinated with flowers in particular and also just spending a lot of time in trees. But as it is with a lot of people in our culture, I went into school and I went to college and those things were kind of put on the back burner and I was taught to really privilege rationality, rationality and logic and being a serious person in the world and so many of my kind of I would say like fairy or magic tendencies were um, hidden or put on the back burner and only once I really looked around when I was in college and I looked at kind of like the professors and the graduate students and I thought to myself these people do not seem happy and they don't seem like they really know how to live. And not like from a judgmental place, but more of a, wow, like, is this who I want to become? And I really didn't. And although I absolutely love school and I, I loved academia in a lot of ways because I'm so curious, um, I decided to turn into a different direction. And so I started to go towards earth honoring practices and embodiment practices and, um, things that just aren't normally taught <laughs> in school. And I, I, lo I lost some friends over it, to be honest. Um, I think some people who I really cared about were like, oh my God, like you've turned into a hippie. Like, what is this? You're so weird. But I really had to follow that inner guidance and that longing. I just really had a longing. I just thought to myself, this cannot be it. Like, we're not just like born and we die and we're just like ashes in the ground. Like there's some magic here. I know I used to feel it when I was a child and I wasn't making it up. So um, I was very lucky to be in the Bay Area near San Francisco in my 20s. And I found an herbal medicine teacher. And when I saw her course, my whole being just lit up. 
and it was something like cultivating the herbal medicine woman within. And I just thought, oh my gosh, <laughs> that is the direction I need to go in. And so she really helped me reawaken that ability to listen to the plants and to trust our intuition and inner knowing that they really are speaking with us. They really do want most of them to aid humanity and help us heal because we are all related. And in fact, I love what she says about the plants. She says that they are our elders and our ancestors because they were here long before humanity was even here and they created the environment in which we can actually live like the oxygen and all of that so mm. i'm just nodding along over here just letting everyone know who's listening because your words are just speaking to my heart so beautifully and kind of wish we could meet in person and play with plants sometime <laughs> that would be great i i also so resonate to what you said about you know, loving academia in some ways, I'm also really curious and I love studying. And I um, felt, I feel very lucky that I got to go to university and yet it wasn't the right environment for me. And I'm so glad I got out and I got to play and be outside of these institutions and get to really question things. Um, and I also always feel it's such a compliment when someone says, oh, you're gone with the fairies. I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes, I totally am gone with the fairies. <laughs> Um, I also really love that you are doing so much education work with your podcast and on Instagram and um, as much as I sometimes feel some sense of heaviness around social media and screen time and all of that I also have so much love and gratu gratitude and just openness to the fact that we can have these conversations now um, so there's really it really has these two sides you know like part of me feels like gosh I just want to actually be outside with my naked feet on the ground more often and smell flowers and also in some ways the things we believe which is kind of unbelievable really are so niche in some ways you know and I think in that sense it's so beautiful that we in some ways operate at the margins of a lot of mainstream stuff but um, we get to find each other now through podcasting and Instagram and all these connections. So yeah, thank you so much again for running your own podcast. I would love to hear a little bit more about what that journey has been like for you, what you love about it. Maybe you also have some feelings about social media versus feet on the ground. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I've had a nuanced relationship with social media myself. And <clears throat> what I really try to do there is... I think I'd call it beauty medicine. And I have a, a weekly practice of creating flower mandalas for my own joy and connection to beauty because I really feel that beauty is a medicine. And I share that just out of the desire to, to uplift, I guess, in a way, or just give people a little break from the bad news. And it's not a sense of escapism or trying to deny what's really happening in the world. But it's, to me, it's like a little supplement of nourishment <laughs> to get through the days. Um, and I know that I've gone through some dark nights of the soul myself and um, the very small little things are the things that kind of help to get you through. And so to me, I feel like I'm just kind of like broadcasting a little beacon of like, remember, you're beautiful. It's gonna be okay, nature's here. Um, without, you know, glossing over the fact that we're definitely in a dire situation together. Um, but yeah, I've also met some incredible soul sisters through social media and really found kind of like my community. And that's part of why I started the podcast. I was a, a young mother living in the suburbs temporarily and feeling very isolated. And I had a background in media and I just thought to myself, why, why don't I just use my curiosity and my love of media to start to kind of find my people or at least share the ideas that I want to explore. <laughs> and so I started the podcast and it really was a lifesaver in a way to, to feel like I had my own little corner of the world to explore in, in a, in a safe way. And that's something I've talked about even on my podcast is that for some reason, Instagram felt like a safe space to me. And so when I started to really tap into listening more to the nature spirits and actually channeling 
messages and poems from what I'd call the nature spirits. I started to share them on Instagram of all places because I just felt it was it would be okay. And the response was beautiful. And so it's been a blessing. And at the same time, I do have to really watch myself because there's times when I get a little bit too attached to my phone and I notice an addiction coming in where I'm like, oh, I need to check what's happening. And th th they are built that way. They're built to work with our dopamine response and everything. I think it's dopamine. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So the podcast has been me basically feeling isolated and just kind of shouting into the dark, like, hey, I'm over here. Is there anyone else out there too? And the response has been so incredible. And I'm really, really grateful for it. Me too. What you just said makes so much sense to me and really resonated. And yeah, I just want to kind of reflect that back to you. Um, this beauty is medicine. I hadn't articulated it this way. And I feel such a sense of relief almost hearing that from you because I think for me also, I'm also a web designer and then I have daydream roles. And so I think a lot about colors and composition and forms and shapes and all these things. And it's always been something I loved playing with. And I think sometimes there's a part of me that's a bit like, oh, is this too shallow? You know, does this really matter? Am I distracting from the real issue? And I think what you're saying makes so much sense. I think we're both people that really care about politics and about saying things as they are, you know, and um, not, I'm trying not to shy away from shadow aspects of the human experience. And also there is so much medicine and just bringing some beauty sometimes and like holding people and letting them lean into something beautiful. Um, I was just making a batch of graphics yesterday and it was such a joy to do, you know, it was just like, yeah, I, I think, I think allowing people to visually connect with, connect with something um, is sometimes the gateway to, um, to understand, you know, like flower mandalas are so beautiful. There's so much wisdom and integrity and resilience in nature that we really just have to copy you know like I just want to copy dandelion sometimes and be like if if I have like a tenth of that resilience like what can stop me you know <laughs> absolutely and I think you really made a great point there that the image or the beauty can be the doorway or the gateway and I don't know if you've ever noticed but when I post something very direct in terms of my text I'll pair it with a beautiful flower mandala mm -hmm. so in a way I'm I'm saying something really that could even sound harsh or intense or difficult to hear but I'm pairing it with beauty because I want to soften the blow and help people open before they're like oh my god really <laughs> and I think that that's advice I've been given um, in the past where people have said, you know, you're going to speak the truth, but you're going to do it with a smile. <laughs> I think that's the greatest advice. Yeah, that's really, really good advice. And I also, it makes me feel that obviously not in all areas, but there are some areas in which I feel very privileged and lucky to get to talk about them from a place that's, you know, invested and emotionally open and curious but not always directly affected and so I feel that then it is my um duty is the wrong word because it feels like something that's like externally put on you and actually I want this myself you know um but there's a sense of responsibility doesn't feel quite right either you know but you know we have platforms and we're very lucky to get to talk about things that not everyone gets to talk about when I speak to people that are in employment for example I often hear them say oh I, I think I can't talk about that online or like nudity for example I'm quite open to a bit of nudity every now and then you know and I just remember being in employment that would have been totally like no way um and so I think there's something very beautiful in, in being able to speak about these things. And you're totally right. Um, being able to do it with a smile is often what gets other people engaged and, you know, it helps them feel 
open to it um sometimes i think i'm i, I would like to be like a gateway queer for people for straight people <laughs> because i like i have within you know being queer is difficult in some ways but i have a lot of privilege within that i am um passing as a cis person i'm white um i have education and online connections all these things so i get to talk about queerness from a relative place of safety and i want to have these conversations and if there's straight people out there that see me as their gateway queer i'm so here for that <laughs> i love that you're talking about gateways because <laughs> i think that many of us are bridges or people who open a door and i identify with that very <laughs> strongly because i myself have felt like almost like a gateway witch or something like that because i come across in a way that i think is a little more accessible and palatable to kind of like mainstream american culture at least and so um also with the beauty it's not like all dark like cats and cauldrons and things like that it's things that people can feel good about like, being curious about um and i really actually structure my podcast in a way to try to be inclusive of people who really are just stepping into this world for the very first time and trying to make it feel like hey it's okay you can talk to spirits or you know explore your womb space or like think about sexuality in a different way like <laughs> i try not to go super down the rabbit holes or get extreme because i really want people to explore what calls to them themselves but kind of opening that and just saying like it's okay i'm doing it you can do it too i know it's in there <laughs> Yeah, that's really beautiful. That makes total sense. Um, I also really loved what you said earlier about working with the moon cycles and how, you know, by by how you make your products, you're kind of giving yourself this structure and this connection to the moon, which is really beautiful. Can we maybe talk about that a little bit more about what the moon cycle means to you, what your favorite phase is? Maybe you have a favorite, I don't know. Or if there's any practices or modalities that stand out to you as particularly helpful in working with the moon yeah this has been a real joy to dive into and it's an ongoing journey to to learn really what working with the moon means and there's so much that can be done but the way that I've started is by at the very least honoring the new moon and the full moon phases and understanding and paying attention to how those phases are affecting my energy and um, my creativity and things like that. And what I've really noticed is that on the new moon and the full moon in particular, my dreams are the strongest and my ability to kind of what I would call channel or kind of like download messages or write poems or be creative in kind of innovative ways um, those happen on the new and full moon and um, i also like to really pay attention to my own moon cycle so my moon time or what people call period um, and for a long time i was aligned with the new moon and now i'm aligned with the full moon and it's been interesting to see how that um, influences my life but i have been pretty committed to really taking a pause um, at least on the first two days of my moon time and that's absolutely a privilege because i don't go to a nine to five job i do have a child so there's not really like hey i'm just going to be in bed all day but my husband luckily has been incredibly supportive of that and knows that you know when my moon time comes i am in a ceremony and he will make sure to do some extra work around the house and take care of my son so i can rest and more importantly so that i can dream because I find that that it's incredibly potent time to not only shed what no longer belongs to me and what I don't need to hold on to, but also to be dreaming and connecting in with the inner earth, the womb space of, of our mother earth, the, the core of the earth. And um, I find at least for me, and I think maybe other people who bleed would find this too is that my energy gets drawn down towards the earth and i want to sit on the ground and i want to be quiet and i want to close my eyes and be in darkness if i can um, it's a really beautiful practice and i think it's something that has been so taboo for so long that i used to even be embarrassed like maybe a year or two ago to talk about it but now it's so clear to me that 
our ability to bleed and to cycle in this way is so incredibly sacred and such a root of power that it's impossible for me to ignore anymore. So yeah, that's all tied to the moon as well. And then one practice that I could tell you about that I really love is making moon water on the full moon and basically just having some filtered water or spring water and putting in a stone or an herb um, and putting it out under the full moon and then taking that water in before the sun rises so that it's holding the energy of the full moon. And that's a beautiful elixir that can be, um, you can drink it, you could put it on your altar, you could bathe with it. And it's, it's about, for me, reconnecting with that magic. And I think science will eventually probably catch up with what's happening there. But I strongly believe that there's an alchemy that happens there with the light of the moon and the water. Yeah, I mean, there's so many things I really hope that science is going to catch up with. Um, I was also been thinking a lot about flower essences and how beautiful it is to support the different parts of the cycle in that way. Um, and, and if I'm really honest, I think there's still even part of me, even after years of doing this podcasting, that is like, but is it real? And, and I, I'm still open to myself having these moments of doubt because I think that is the culture that we live in. And I think what I tell myself, and I'm just sharing that now in case someone else is also feeling this kind of like little bumps of resistance is coming up, is there are so many really tangible practical ways that you can hold on to into in your faith with like moon water or flower senses that just makes so much sense even to the most science minded person for example having this commitment to marking time in this way really slows us down there's no arguing with that right and then this like making of a flower essence or even buying it and committing to having it in a special place like an altar where you sit down each day or once a week for a moment of stillness and you have a little bit of it to really connect with that plant and the intention with which it is made i think there's always so much care and love and intention that goes into making of these waters that is just so touching and i think that's something that's really missing for all of us this intimacy of just like um here yeah, i'm making something for you you know like i hope this is supporting your healing in this way and i i think there's also because it is a more time intensive process, something about the presence and the making time for it that's really sacred to me. And, and it is another pattern. I think we have so many patterns that could be seen as self-destructive, though I want to be really gentle with that. I think sometimes they are just the best thing that's available and they serve our nervous systems in some way. And, you know, it's a, it's a tough time in many ways. So like I am reaching for chocolate sometimes and then I want to really acknowledge that that's okay too. But I think these magical practices are another pattern that we can really lean into and build. And that's really beautiful. So yeah, thank you for sharing. I totally agree. And I think we're so much more powerful than we realize. And when we do put intention towards something and take a moment to say, this is medicine for me, whether or not you believe in the chemical ability for that water to do something to your body, your very thought of this is medicine for me, I'm going to take a pause and take a sip. It, is, it will become medicine because we are that powerful. And yeah, I just, I would say to the, the belief side of it, I was just telling my mother the other day, because um, sometimes she's like, what are you getting into? And I'm like, oh, I'm just like talking to the little people. It's cool. And she's like, okay, uh, tell me more. And I just told her, I said, you know, we've been taught to believe so many, so many harmful, painful things. Why not just just go out on a limb and believe something that's beautiful, that's connecting you, that brings you joy. Like, let's follow the joy because why not? Why, <laughs> what do we have to lose? Like, yeah. Yeah, totally. That is so beautiful to remember. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Another example that comes up for me to illustrate that even more, because I really feel so connected to what you just said is like, Within capitalism, one of the key things that I really strongly disagree with and feel like is such a 
big kind of belief that we've all been told is that people don't inherently want to contribute it something beautiful there's the story of like well some people are just lazy or you know like maybe they don't want to get better and do some kind of work and i just think if you look if you look at nature with any kind of sense of openness that you can see that there's so much joy and reward in showing up with your gifts and contributing and what that looks like will be so different you know some of us have um made experiences or have just been unlucky or you know just have been on that particular journey that means they maybe can't work in conventional ways right now um or maybe they don't want to you know but the story of laziness is something that i find <laughs> really kind of really difficult difficult and really don't want to swallow that and when i kind of then think about well you know why why not believe in and and the power of ritual or the blessings that ceremony can bring and the power of my own intention as an alternative it really kind of expands my capacity to lean into that when i see that collectively we've been leaning into all these other things without ever seeing any proof for them you know yeah or even the proof that we feel terrible about, about ourselves or mm -hmm. we feel disconnected from life and yeah Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um hmm. i would love to hear and um, maybe you don't have one that's totally fine but what is your favorite flower right now what is kind of most exciting to you at the moment Ooh, i love that question <laughs> i'm looking out in my garden i ooh. i think <laughs> i have to go with dandelion with you yeah because i've had dandelions cropping up all over my yard and I absolutely adore them and my dear friend recently told me that she eats the flowers because she um, finds that it strengthens her kind of will center and her solar plexus which makes sense it might sound a little out there but it, it it really is like this little sunshine burst and it it feels so confident like you look at a dandelion flower and you're like okay they're like we don't care where we are we're in an alley we're shining bright it's all <laughs> it's all good we're just gonna show up as strong as we can and the whole plant is medicine and yet the culture keeps saying like oh it's a weed take it out spray it like put chemicals on it and it's just like nope we're gonna keep doing our job and so i love that persistence i love that resilience and I love that it's not afraid to show up and be beautiful, even though it's like constantly under threat, <laughs> which I resonate with 100% because for a lot of my life, I felt that it was dangerous to be beautiful. And I had kind of inherited that kind of like message from my probably my matriarchal lineage because for a long time especially for women it really was dangerous to be beautiful and to shine up and fully be in our voice and in our power and in our wholeness. And so as I like just slowly try to like crawl back to becoming a full woman, I guess I would say I am inspired by dandelion. Yeah. Mm, that makes a lot of sense to me. And I also resonate with what you just said about inheriting this idea that to be beautiful is, is risky sometimes. It's definitely been risky for women in my family and it's been risky for me sometimes. And yeah, dandelion has a lot to teach us in that, that area. And I think also generally, it's really beautiful to work with weeds and to connect to this, yeah, the sense of taking up space, no matter what, and the abundance, and also the availability. I think this is definitely true for myself um, as well. And it, it's, it was true at the beginning when I was getting interested in these things and it still comes up for sometimes is this like sense of consumerism like oh I have there's like a spiritual void inside me and no I want to engage with some practices I'm going to buy something as a first step rather than you know looking what's already around me and I think weeds are just such a great starting point because really most of us have some weeds in our neighborhood that we can connect to and maybe it might not be safe to ingest them or work with them depending on kind of what environment they're growing in um, but that's okay sometimes it's beautiful to just sit with a plant and listen and be quiet and see what's coming up so um, 
there's not always a need to ship something around the world that that <laughs> that isn't in your neighborhood and i think it's also so beautiful to remember that the the plants that thrive where we are know so much about thriving where we are as well you know we as humans which is really cool yeah exactly and i strongly believe that the plants will also come to you the medicine will come to you that you need because i've lived in many different places and certain flowers or plants will suddenly just spring up outside my door, literally. Mm -hmm. And I will think to myself, okay, I guess this is the medicine that I need. For example, here I have lemon balm just coming up in just such abundance. And I can certainly use the medicine of lemon balm, which is very calming to the nervous system, especially as a, as a newer mom. I have a toddler who's three years old, and so anything to calm is so helpful. And here I have this plant just like, hey, what's up, we're here. <laughs> Yeah, same. I have lemon balm in my garden as well. It's currently being taken over by cleavers. They're just so dominant that all the lemon balm is like, oh, okay, I guess it's cleavers time now, <laughs> um, which is which is also totally fine. Something is pulling me to ask you before we go about dream work a little bit more. So you've been talking about taking some time for rest at the beginning of your moon time, which makes total sense to me. I'm trying to do that too, though. It's a little bit all over the place at the moment. So that's also like a separate interesting story. Um, but yeah, do you, in what ways are you connecting with your dreams? Do you have any practices or ideas that you can share with that? I do. Yeah. Um, for a long time, I was writing down every morning before I would even lift my head off the pillow. I would just kind of roll over and scribble into my notebook, whatever I had dreamed. And often it would seem like gibberish. It would seem super random. But then I started to notice as I would look back on my dreams, many of them were actually teaching me something or even sometimes they were prophetic which I wouldn't know at the time I'd be like well why would I be like in a gas station with that person like that makes no sense what a weird random dream and then later I would oh, okay it was preparing me for something and you know some dreams are just kind of like the mind working through things and then sometimes the dreams that I have I get a very visceral sense that it is what I would call a medicine dream and it's something that I need to remember and I wake up like full of the energy of that dream and I, I feel called to tell you um, I recently had an extremely potent dream that was actually quite disturbing to me that helped me understand what it is to go through severe domestic violence as a woman and as a child and so this is not um, my particular life experience, but the dream was so vivid and taught me so much about what uh, people might feel in that situation. I woke up just, I mean, just so heartbroken, but in a way that gave me compassion um, for something that I hadn't previously understood. And so I'm still kind of exploring like, okay, like what, what am I maybe meant to do with this? And a friend recommended, well, why don't you have someone on your podcast to talk about this issue? And I thought that was a great idea and a great starting point. Um, but it really made me realize kind of like the legacy of what many of our families are dealing with from generations of misuse of power and mm. feeling in prison and things like that. And so that's all very heavy in, in our <laughs> flower conversation. But I just say that to say that sometimes dreams can be teachings and sometimes it feels like, okay, wow, I didn't really rest, but I went to a mini university class on like what people are thinking when they're trapped in a domestic violence cycle. So um, yeah, I'm still learning about how to work with that. And that dream in particular felt like I needed to do something about it. So I'm going to be exploring that in the future. Yeah, I agree. Dreams can teach us so much. And I also often have this experience of waking up and still feeling the experience in my nervous system so strongly. And, and it can be any kind of uh, direction really can be really beautiful and this sense of like waking up in a warm nest and being like oh yeah I really hope that will be something that I uh, experience in this in this reality as well um, and also I think 
dream work often reminds me or kind of like just invites me to remember that there is not necessarily hierarchy in realities, you know, like I think this is kind of circling back to what we said earlier about belief systems and, and flower essences or moon waters and these things. I think we, we so easily dismiss these experiences as like, oh, but that's not real. And, you know, obviously that's not to say that we would dream something and then claim that as our experience or identity, but there is something that can expand our compassion and that's so um, meaningful and important as well. And I think I want to step away from this thinking of like, oh, but that's not real. You know, I can't touch that. I think dreams can be so beautiful and they're often, so often they're the seed of what, what is eventually becoming the the thing that we want to give birth to in some way and so yeah mugwort mm. <laughs> oh my gosh mugwort <laughs> do you yeah. work with mugwort do you take mugwort yes. before you sleep oh my yes God. i have I... mugwort tattoos here oh i was so gosh. sorry that no one else they're on both arms they were my favorite tattoos. <gasps> um yes i love this plant so much i feel very close to it i um, sometimes smoke mugwort or I have a mugwort tea I infused oil with mugwort and made it into a balm <sighs> you're so brave because I had a, a mugwort oil that I would only put on in the morning because I was like oh my gosh if I put it on before I go to sleep I'm going to go some really crazy places but a very powerful beautiful plant mm. yes it is yeah Thank you so much for all the beautiful things that you've shared. I really hope that people listening are maybe um, a little bit more curious and open. And like you said, maybe it's been a bit of a gateway to them to think about what kind of magic or plans that they're interested in working with right now. And I also want to recommend everyone to check out your podcast because it's so beautiful as well. And if anyone likes listening to mine, they might really well listen to yours as well and enjoy that too. Um, before we go, can you let us know what you're currently offering and where people can find you? Yeah, you can find everything on my website, which is moontent.co. And I'm also on Instagram at moontentco. And that's where I tend to post a lot of my writings or flower mandalas, things like that. And um, currently, yeah, just I'm offering the podcast, which is Moonwise, and you can find that on iTunes and you can find it on the website. And uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, I have a, a little gift that I like to give people, which is a guide um, to the four phases of your monthly cycle. Um, I call it the Moonwise Guide. And um, that can be found on my website when you sign up for the newsletter. I'll send that straight to you. So that can be a nice introduction to some of the work that I'm doing. And yeah, I love hearing from people and I do read all my messages on Instagram. So feel free to send me a shout. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so, so much. I will link to you in the show notes as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yara. It's been <laughs> such a pleasure. Thank you.